it is I, Zarkon, aka Fifth Rate Duelist, and I'm here with YCS 250th Los Angeles Champion, Polly Aronson. Howdy. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself? I am Polly, uh, 250th YCS Champion, now two time YCS Champion, member of Luxury Gaming from Connecticut. And I, yes, that's it. Oh, you guys are from Connecticut? Well, I'm from Connecticut. Oh, you're from Connecticut. I thought Luxury was from Connecticut. And I no. was like, damn. Luxury's based in New Jersey. Yeah. Oh, that's even worse. Oh, I'm sick. You don't like New Jersey? Nah. New Jersey's wow. boring. To each their own. <laughs> I'm trying to get chat to show up on my uh, yeah. iPad. But oh. that's okay. Okay, it is working. Chat says New Jersey is boring, not gonna lie. My ex is from wow. New Jersey. Okay, that's a that's a big reason not to go to New Jersey. What's in New Jersey? What'd they say? He said that his ex is from New Jersey. Oh. Oh. And I was like, oh, then stay far away. Stay far away. Okay, let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know. I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for like twelve hours. And Oh. I just want to hear someone else speak to me. That's because fair. Well, I've just been talking I... to myself. Oh, have you been streaming all day? Or just playing? I've been streaming all day. Ah, nice. Um, I have not played any Yu-Gi-Oh! today or yesterday. So, my friend last night tried to teach me um, new things. Um, which, trying to teach me new things is a little bit like trying to teach... A dog not to bark. Um, it's like pulling teeth. I do not like learning new things. But alas, there is a new set coming out. And soon I will be forced to learn new things. So we sat down last night and he read to me. Like he went through like a combo of like what the pearly combo does. And what like the super heavy samurai combo does. And what like the new man don't combo does. And I like I listened to like the first 30% of each. And then I zoned out. And <laughs> But... <laughs> You know, the, you know that meme where it's like, it's like, read, student, learn. And it's like, you got the guy strapped down on the table and the other guy's like, and he's like, I cannot read. You cannot make me read. No. <laughs> that's like, that's like, that, that's Brad um, teaching me new things. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. I wish I had someone teaching me purely. Chat's been trying to work. help me. Um, that's good. But once I once I learn myself, I can I can teach you uh, these uh, these newfangled. I can help. We can we can help learn these newfangled things together. Wait, <laughs> what if I want to teach you per pearly? Oh, be my guest. But keep, bear in mind, as I said, you know, remember picture that meme again. I can't read no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I will. I will glue your eyes to the dueling book screen. Ah. Uh, and I will show you the ways <laughs> of purely... Dude, okay, so why don't we talk about Push Kayak? Because, like, who cares about the old format? It's not like there's an LA regional that I need to be preparing for on a daily basis, which I'm not because I'm playing purely instead. But, Dara, the, the LA regional was today. Did you, no, did you not uh, go? Did that you was the Los Angeles regional. I mean, the Las Vegas regional. <laughs> that was, was the Las Vegas was... regional. Wait, I was being ironic. You missed the Las Vegas Regional today? Yeah, no one told me. What the? Are you kidding? Oh my god. Z I, I was know. literally joking. I'm sick. Uh, I'm oh, isn't that like three hours from you? Four. Only? Oh my gosh. Dude, I don't drive to regionals <laughs> like you do. That's not something I do. What? Oh, well, then you're not going to have any regionals to go to. Whoops. Oh, I fell. It's okay. <clears throat> don't die. Okay, so why don't you give us your thoughts on on kayak? So from what the limited amount I've seen so far, I think like the samurai deck is like really like apparently one one card combo ends on like Baron Naturia Exterio and like a four negate Apo and like scales and follow up with, with one card plus like your other four cards that you open. I'm just like Huh? Yeah, I've been playing that's, a set deck. Cool. Um, but the downside is like you can't play any spells and traps. So it's like I feel like I feel like it's a deck where it's like 
it's going to be really good, like, g- in general, but, like, it's going to be real... The, the things that it is weak to, it's going to be really weak to. Because, like, if the, if it has, like, let's say a random bad matchup, like, you're not going to be able to effectively side that matchup because you can't side spell and trap. So, like, your overall, like, side options and, like, utility options are, like, limited. So it's, like, if you happen to face something that, like, you have a bad matchup against, it's, like, there's you have less utility options to try to, like, fix the matchup post side let's say than like a normal deck would so like that's an issue i could see foresee with that deck um but i didn't think about uh, that combo seemed to stay in, so yeah oh by the way Probably kayak i don't know too well yet what's up kayak is cyberstorm hurricane or something like that it's also a website where you can get flights <laughs> wait cyberstorm cyberstorm <laughs> access is that kayak I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Okay, not Cyberstorm Hurricane. I was like, where does the A and the C come from? Yeah. Oh, the AC stands for air conditioning. Oh, okay. I like air conditioning. I also like air conditioning. Feels good, man. My okay. mom refuses to put air conditioning on in the car in the summer. It's very sad. Oh, feels bad, man. Yeah. I'm going to go visit my cousins in Texas this summer, and I better hope there's air conditioning. Yeah, there probably will be down there. Hopefully. Okay, okay, back to Yu-Gi-Oh. Sorry. Oh, I can no. concentrate. It's not like I've been streaming for 12 hours and all I can think about is purely. Dude. <laughs> okay, so what other archetypes have you looked at from Cyberstorm Access? Um, the Samurai one, like I said, um, I haven't looked that much at it yet. I heard Dragon Lake makes a comeback, which is kind of nice. Um, I heard that too, I think, like, but I don't know how. I also think, unless they hit cash, I do think cash is still going to have a, pre- a big presence in the front. Like, from what I was told, Sam- the Samurai deck actually has trouble, going, uh, especially going second against cash, because, like, again, you can't play spells and traps, and, like, cash is notoriously weak to spells to, like, board breakers and nib. You can play nib, but that's it. And if you don't see nib, like, you're not going to beat ca- cash going second if you're playing the Samurai deck. So, like, that's an issue. Um, also, just in general, like, the nature of the cash deck, it's always been pretty, like, there's no deck that can really go better than 50-50 against it going second, because, like, just if you don't see your non-engine, like, Cash just beats you. So, like, as long as Cash is still in the format, it's still going to be a viable deck. And, like, yeah, it's, it's still going to... And, and just Diabolos, too, like, gatekeeping all the combo decks is still going to be an issue as long as that card is still legal and the deck is still seeing play. So, like, I think um we're probably going to get banlist before the next YCS, though, so I don't... We, we're expecting Cash to not really be an issue anymore, but if, by chance, there's not a banlist before the next event, I think Cash is still going to see a... a substantial portion of top cut yeah that's the thing i'm trying to figure out is like do i want to get rid of my kashira deck like because the price is probably just gonna keep going down or do i want to play dragon at the regional i was told that pearly apparently has a pretty good cash matchup so like that's interesting um but maybe there will be some decks that can, can that might check cash a little bit but yeah, I, I also just I think there will probably very very likely be a ban list. Like I can't. They usually do one every three months, right? And the last one was what in like early February. Mm-hmm. So there'd have to be one probably in like mid April. So I mean, mathematically, it should be like April. By the time the next YCS isn't going to be until like May twentieth. So it, so it should it would be it would take like the three months and then a whole another like five weeks on top of that. It would take them not releasing a ban list for all that time for there to not be one before the next event. So. Okay. I think, I think that would be surprising if they did that. Banless predictions? Probably, um... I mean, they're either going to ban Diablos. Like, that card is such a, like, such a problem in combination with the Cashier deck, but it probably doesn't need to be banned in and of itself. So as long as they hit the Cashier deck sufficiently, I don't think they have to ban Diablos. I bet they could just hit, like, I'd be cool if they just hit or banned or Eyes Heart. Because then the whole deck is just completely dead forever, and then like we don't have to worry about it anymore. But they're probably not going to do that either, because that's also kind of too heavy-handed. They'll probably like, I think Fender should probably go to one. That card's just really good. It's really good generic cards. You play in a lot of decks, but I guess they left it at least two though. Then like it would still be a cool like thing to splash in different decks. So maybe that would be cool to leave at two or three. So maybe they limit Unicorn instead, um, or maybe they hit like I don't know. There's like a lot of cards they could hit. Like limiting you know two of the main deck cards would be a decent hit, but maybe 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 wouldn't do enough. So maybe, like, limit Arise Heart and, like, one or two main deck cards. Or maybe just, like, I don't know, 
I feel like a combination of a couple hits would be good. I think a banning a rise here would be too much. Just banning Diabolos would be not enough. So it'll be interesting. I think the I think just lit, limit a couple cards in the deck would do it. That's fair. I think banning Diablos is like a fine hit. Because yeah. that gets rid of the whole like lock five to ten. Um, that's true, and it gets rid of the whole issue of like gatekeeping the combo decks because of like the issue of just randomly banishing your like engine requirements or your stuff from your extract. It would it would fix the issue of like all the decks having to like play duplicates in their extract. So like Diablos is what warped deck building so much. So like that would okay. that would fix that, which would allow a lot more decks to be viable again. Yeah, like and I didn't even think about what you said. You're right. Like it would stop the lock five combo too, actually, which is crazy. Yeah, I would be fine if they just banned Diablos. I think Kashira would function just fine, but it wouldn't be yeah. so unfair. Because I would yeah. say lock five is unfair. Yeah, and you're right. Like that would hit. I didn't even think about that. That one hit would fix the deck building warp and the lock issue. Like with one hit, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. At that um, point, there would be no real reason to play the deck. It would just be a macro or turbo deck. It would be like Dryden control, but like exactly a Razor control. Oh, right. that's what you said. That's yeah, like ma meant. macro, as in like the the rise hurt, basically. Oh, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. It all makes sense now. By the way, Chad, if you guys have any questions or any comments you want to make, is that your prize card, Polly? I hope not. <laughs> Dude, um, what do you get in that my... poor card? I, I sure hope this isn't my prize card. That would be nuts. Is it your prize <laughs> card? What? I don't know. You're just like, you have all these like completely deformed cards in front of you. <laughs> and like, normally people who win tournaments and go on interviews want to show off their cards. But you're only showing off like damaged cards. I even show off my cards. You think. You think I'm going to do the normal thing of all people? <laughs> oh, wait a second. Those are your cards from the... Oh, what did you tell the chat what happened? Oh, you want to know what happened now? I see. Well, yeah, with all these um, damaged cards. They're not damaged. They're just... They're just special. So, basically, um... So, Sunday morning, um... For those of you who don't yet know this, the infamous story... Um, Sunday morning at 8.40, 20 minutes before the start of day two, I, uh, so, so me and my friend, we were checking out of our hotel room at, like, 8, and we were, like, rushing a little bit because we wanted to make sure we got to the convention center on time, and I threw a water bottle in my backpack because, um, I wanted, you know, I was like, oh, this will come in handy later. A lot of times in Top Cut, um, it's very difficult to get, like, to have access to food or water because you're not technically allowed to leave the Top Cut area without a judge escort. So they'll take you to, like, the bathroom briefly but like it's it's hard to like ask to go like oh let me go order some food outside and come back like either so it can be hard to get water they'll usually make provisions to try to get players to water but um i was like it definitely come in handy just to have this for later so i threw a bottle of water in my backpack or my my bag and then get to the convention center we're sitting outside waiting to get let in it's 8 40 uh the doors open at like 8 50 round 10 starts at 9 a.m so it's 20 minutes i open my bag to go to show somebody something and I'm like, oh, that's weird. The the water bottle's empty. I I could have sworn it was like half full. Oh god. And um that was when I realized I had uh destroyed all of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um Yeah, so, so the water do? bottle opened up in my backpack and destroyed all of my cards. Um half of which were not even my cards. I literally had borrowed two decks from my friend before the event, my, the cash deck that I was playing, and a Sprite tribe raid deck, and uh, everything got destroyed. So, um, in twenty in the span of 20 minutes, I had to, like, try to, like, literally re rebuild my whole deck, and fortunately, like, I, you know, I have a lot of, I know a lot of people in the community, and fortunately, like, there were enough people nearby who I knew who, who helped me, um, like, a friend nearby had a whole cash tier court on him that I was able to borrow. Another friend, like, had a pack of sleeves. We got in at, like, 8, 8.50, and, like, in 10 minutes, like, my friends literally sleeved, but sat down, like, washed my stuff, sleeved, the, and they sleeved up the deck while I went and, like, walked around the room, like, ran around the room, like, trying to get, like, the last couple tech cards I needed for my deck, and managed to reconstruct my deck in 10 minutes. 
Oh my god. And like got back like eight fifty five to them. They were like, Here you go. The deck's sleeved up. It's just missing like the five cards. I had gotten them from like I bought a couple cards from vendor like the vendors, like borrowed the a couple cards I needed, came back, sleeved sleeve them up, and ran to my table and sat down for round ten at nine oh one AM. Oh my god. Um, yeah. And made it. And then won that round and then went two oh one in Swiss on day two, made top cut, and then won the tournament with that borrowed deck that I barely completed in time to play day two. Um that was oh a real God. talent. But it was a community effort because uh I definitely I definitely would not have been able to do that like by myself if I didn't have my friends like around who were willing to help me with everything. Um but yeah that's what happened. So then like after the tournament was over I was like, oh well it's cool. I just won a prize card. Now I get to assess the damage. So I had to uh go through uh all my cards and um yeah, we had some uh, some damage. I think I added up. I, I damaged. Uh, I, th- I think like five hundred dollars worth of borrowed cards. Plus, I didn't even add up my own cards. But it was probably gonna have, like three hundred or something. So, um, that sucked. But oh, fun fact too. This is not the first time I've spilled water on my cards. In YCS Costa Rica last year, where I got second, um, I also had a bottle of water open up in my backpack it was one of those like sport bottles that squirts out and apparently the water had just been like squirting out throughout the afternoon in my bag and i didn't realize it while i was playing and then like uh i lost to jesse in finals uh cotton the other jesse and then like 15 the same similar thing like 50 but this was like after the tournament was over fit like literally i had just lost in finals and i was like all bummed out whenever i, I opened up my bag and just see that all of my cards are just soaked um so it's happened twice now <laughs> Okay. But think about um, both it. Times both I times it's happened. Both times it's happened, you got either first or second place. Yeah, that's like the cool part. Um, so I guess like I think next time I top, I just have to like pour water on my cards and <laughs> yeah, we just take the L, bro. Yeah. No, no, but um, but yeah. So, um, fun fact though, um, so okay. So we did some experimentation yesterday. Um, so um, I'm not chilling this book, which is titled The War on Small Business, How the Government Used the Pandemic to Crush the Backbone of America by Carol Roth. I've never read this book in my life. It was just in my house. Um, what this is for is card flattening. So yesterday we took an ironing board and ironed some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I'm just going to show you guys these two cards um these two cards looked like these cards oh my god yesterday and now they're flat like almost completely flat and they feel like they're a little mushy but like barely like they're not horrible um so like ironing Yu-Gi-Oh cards might actually just be insane but like I, I, I want to test on a few so far I haven't figured out yet completely but like uh, I'll keep everyone updated on my social media if uh, the ironing project goes well. Okay, can you hire me so I can, like, make a few dollars by ironing Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Um, sure. Sure. Absolutely. We just need a judge to, like, oh, you know what we should do? After we iron them, we should send them in for grading. So then they'll be oh. like, oh, this is a nine. The ironing works. And then everyone... We'll want to know what kind of iron we use, and then we'll Yo. get sponsored by an iron, and then Yo. I mean an iron company, not by an iron, and then it would just be crazy. Yeah, like this gigantic sprite is like not bad. I'm trying to get it in the glare, but like it's not like the like it's not bad. It's uh. Especially for extra deck cards, which you're not really shuffling, so it's like... But yeah, um, so that's been cool. Um, but yeah, I'll keep everyone updated on how that, uh, how that project goes. <laughs> cool, I'm excited to finally have a job that I care about. Also... Wow. yeah, like, Zara, Zara has, always, has always struggled with not having a cool job. Like, she's a professional comedian and a professional, like, mental health professional who's with, like, a great career and a Yu-Gi-Oh! player who travels. But, like, why would you want to be any of those things when you could be a ironer? <laughs> That's true. Ironer. Okay. Ironer. Just think about how cool of a word that is. Ironer. It's like, you're the, I- you're the iron. That's like a villain from a Pixar movie. 
Oh, hey, Polly, I'm, I'm going to get you a gift. So I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you a gift. I'm going to get you a little clip that goes on the outside of your bag. And then it attaches to a water bottle. So you can still have your water bottle, but it won't go in the bag. That sounds very complicated. I don't think I understand that. I don't think I'll be able to use that gift. That's okay. You'll probably get third place if you spill water. I'm just probably not going to lend you any cards. I'd be like, Ugh. I'll wait till after you spill water because you're not going to do it twice in one event. Like, yes. You can be the, repl you can be the replacement, Death. Yeah, I'll do that for you. But, like, I, I trust that twice in your life you'll spill water on your cards, but not twice in the same event. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Good times. Good times. Okay, let's see. And then I dropped the prize card on the floor. Oh, yes. Well, we don't talk about that. <laughs> oh, I so... thought that was the next story. Okay, okay, never mind, guys, never mind. That didn't happen. It's totally fine. It's totally still mint condition. I don't know what I was talking about when I said I dropped the prize. That was just a, just a meme. <clears throat> yeah. And also, it might be my fault, because I'm the one that dropped the phone, and then I well, was going like, to get it. Well, yeah, Zara was like, I can get that, and she was trying to, like, pick it up with her, like, shoe, and I was like, I can get it, and then proceed. So, it's, no, it's definitely my fault, because I was the one who decided to make, like, a whole spectacle out of it, and, like, I got up on, I got up on, um, a chair, like, like, like this, on my knees, and then, like, leaned over under the table and then like oh shit oh whoops happened again well yeah i gotta stop putting stuff in my shirt pocket because um that's how things fall out of your shirt pocket when you go like halfway upside down and, and bend over to pick something off the ground for no reason um anyway that's fine guys that was just my earpod case i don't know why the light just like turned off when it fell but that's okay anyway <laughs> if you guys have shirt pockets don't use them okay so have you found a buyer yet um, I've had two offers. Um, I, I, so far I've decided, I've decided I'm probably keeping it for now. Um, I kept my first prize card last year. Like, cause I feel like w one, I feel like those things just like go up in value over time. Like if you look at Minerva, right. That go for like, what is it, like 10, 20, like tens of thousands or something crazy like that. There's a few prize cards like that that have just gone up over time. I wouldn't expect these ones to do that. Cause they're not as like, they're not as like iconic or useful in the game, but I still feel like, you know, in 10, 15 years, maybe they'll be worth more than they are now. Um, so I'm probably going to hold them long term. But uh, I have had, I've, I've thought, I've considered, I've definitely considered moving um, at least one of them. This one's cool because it's, because it's, uh, it, it, it's, it says, um, since this year with another verse, they started doing the thing where each one's unique and it'll say, like, this card was awarded to the winner of the first North American YCS of the season. This card was, and then there was the next one, this card was awarded to the winner of the second North American YCS of the season. Um, this one says, this card was awarded to the winner of the 250th. YCS in North America, so or so it's it's like it's like a little bit more unique, which is cool. Um, but so far I've, I'm I'm planning to keep it. I have it uh here with my handy dandy box of prize cards. And, uh, <laughs> you have a box of prize cards. Yeah, well, yeah, and these cool god cards that I got one time. But these aren't these aren't prize cards, but I like these too. Um, oh, cool! I want god cards. And then, What's up? I want God cards. <laughs> and then I got my Super Another Verse from Costa Rica, which is boring. We've all seen those a million times. And then Dueling Dragon from the Road Duel ICS. And and then the, yeah, the Another Verse that says, probably not visible on the camera, but it says, like, the card was awarded to the winner of the 250th. Or the, this card was awarded to the winner of the North American 250th ICS. Yeah. By the way, if anyone's first. listening to the podcast, you should probably watch this on YouTube. Otherwise, you won't really know what's going on right now. Three prize cards. Yeah. Are you going to make it rain with the prize cards? Don't do that. Don't do that. Sorry, I'm not the person you should make. You should suggest that, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's not safe. Anything for the meme. Anything for the joke. <laughs> But, Chat um, says no. don't sell the price card. You should be like that guy that got Tyler the Great Warrior, whatever it's called, and now he's selling it like 30 years later when he's an adult. 
You should do that when you're finally yeah. an adult. You should sell your yeah, price card. Yeah, I, uh, I picked up on that. I'm definitely <laughs> not an adult, so that's, that's fair. <laughs> One day. One day. <laughs> okay, so why don't you walk us through the tournament in, like, a couple of minutes? Not, yeah. like, in a couple of minutes, but, like, in a couple of minutes. Yeah, I gotcha. So, I'll wait until... It's, it's 11.46 Eastern right now. I'll wait until 11.49 Eastern. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I mean, like, now, but, like, for the duration of a couple of minutes. No, you said wait until 11.49. <laughs> okay, then I'm gonna get up and get water, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Oh, look, it's 11.49. Oh, sorry, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay. So, round one... Um, I played against a Sword Soul Duelist. Round two, I played against, I think, a Mirror. Round three, I played against... I don't remember. I, don't, I, had, I had it on my notepad. I don't know if I remember anymore. But it was, like, the, it was, like, a lot of cash mirrors. I think I played, like, five day one or something. And then, like, I... my So, my one loss of the weekend was to a flu player in round four. Um, that sucked. Game one, he even leaved me. Game two, he nibbed me. Um, which, like, those are the cards you lose, so that's fair, you know, it's gonna happen. Um, you wanna hope it doesn't happen in the same match, but it, it did, and, um, that's also, like, one of the decks that I can't slide Ibley against, which is, like, one of my favorite cards in the deck, and that's how you counter, like, evenly and nib, like, game two, but, like, against a flu deck, you can't really put Ibley in. I mean, you could, but, like, I thought about it, but it's, like, just to counter those cards. It doesn't have any actual, like, valuable interaction against their engine, so, like, it's weird, but, um, but, yeah, so I got hit with that. I actually didn't get. I didn't. I didn't see anywhere near as much nib as I expected to throughout the weekend. I think like if people were playing like maining nib or even evenly more, like I feel like because like I always go for. I don't do a rise hard pass. Like I always go for combo. So I feel like if people were playing more nib, it would have been like a lot harder to get through the tournament. But um, because so many people in recent weeks have been playing a rise hard, doing the like a rise hard pass line, I feel like a lot of players were afraid to main nib or even um even play it. So like. That was cool. But anyway, Thunder player was. He got me. Um, <laughs> 2 0. And then round five. Don't I don't remember the exact matchups, but I remember um, winning out through. I think I got a draw in round. I can't remember anymore. I think it was like round eight or nine, day one. Um, like the second to last round on day one. So I finished, I finished day one, uh, 7 1 1. And then. Going to day two, I knew, like, okay, I have to win out. Because if I lose, I'm going to be X2-1. And I didn't expect any X2-1s to top. I was wrong. I think, like, almost 20 of them topped. But, or over 20. But I didn't expect any X2-1s to top. So I thought I had to win out. So I was like, okay. Day two. I'm like, all right. I'm, I'm psyched up. I'm ready. I, I, I got to win three straight rounds. It's going to be hard. But, like, I got this. And then I'm like, oh. My deck is destroyed. Okay. <laughs> and then we pulled through that, like I told you guys about. So... We got round 10. It was against a Math Mech player. Uh, he got me game 2. I drew D-Shifter as my 6th card. That was cool. That was the only time I drew D-Shifter this weekend was as my 6th card that game. Um, so that didn't work, but that's okay. Then round 11, I played against a Rika player. And we were given the written feature match. Because um, he was playing like, kind of a pretty cool deck. And game 1, we sit down. And so this, this is a quick, another funny story. So... Um, for written feature matches, it kind of has its own like little rule set. It's pretty similar to the live stream rule set, but like you have your own table judge, um, you have your own clock. Uh, the clock gets paused so that the note taker can like take notes of the, on the match. You have to you have to verbally declare all your actions as much as possible so that the note taker can keep up. Um, you know, just regular stuff. Uh, you know, no unofficial art on the table in case the photographer comes over because you know um, Konami's in recent years been pretty strict about having unofficial art and stuff like that. No boobies. Um, on live stream. I know. There's no boobies. It's like very sad. Um but um what was I gonna say? Yeah, so he go he goes through like the whole speech. We sit down, we shuffle, we you know, we present, we cut each other's decks, ready to go. We draw our hands, the note taker's like he's on the other side of the table, so he um for written feature matches, the note taker always like uh, tracks one of the two players, like, hands for the... So, like, when you read the written feature match, you see, you read it through the perspective of one of the two players. So, he was, you know, writing down my opponent's hand, and my opponent goes, I didn't unside. I just realized I didn't unside in my last match. And we're all just, like... 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, um, I was like, I just, 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 just fix your deck and draw a new hand. I, I don't care. I'm, I don't want to be the game one. I try like, I don't know. I try to be. I, I try to always play with good sportsmanship. And like to me, it's like, you, you know, if you know someone did something that wasn't intentional, it's like, I know a lot. I know most players would probably be like, like you know, if you can get a free win, it's a free win, right? It's his mistake, right? You most players would take it, but like, I don't know. I didn't. I don't sometimes. So like, we wait, just but there was a one. judge there. Did the judge let you do that? Yeah, the judge was was okay with that. I think if I had the the, the if I had um wanted. The judge actually asked me, you know, how would you like to proceed? Um, I'm pretty sure if I had... Well, I could have definitely gotten him game once if I wanted to. Um, oh, I thought it was the rules that, like, you have to get it. Game was. Oh, okay. But the judge let you decide, so then you just let him do it. Yeah. Okay, that's um, good. You know, it sucks for two, for, like, for content. Like, you have you, you go through all that for a feature match, and then, like, just to have someone get a game loss like that, it stinks. But... Um, yeah. Yeah. Plus, like, I think the judge might have known, like, I tend to, like, try to play with good sportsmanship like that for my opponents, and I like to be lenient. So, like, I, I think the judge knew that that's what I would have wanted to do, um, and was, so he, he was willing to ask me, like, how would you like to proceed? And I said, you know, just, just draw your hand. Um, so I ended, up, I ended up winning that match, um, and then round 12, um... Round 12, what was I going to say? Um, oh, yeah. And then round 12, I played against a, run a Runic Naturia. And it went to game three. In game three, I did full combo. He tried to break it. He tried to, like, play through my stuff. I asked his last push. And he had, like, nothing left. He had, like, two dead cards, two dead Naturia cards in hand. I had, like, full board. He, he had five zones locked at that point, And we hit time. So I, I didn't get to kill him. But I would have won that match. But if we had, like, one more minute, I would have killed him. We got a draw. So I was X one two, and then I start freaking out, and I'm like, "What if I don't like? What if I don't make it? What if like no one below X two makes it?" And like I start like pulling up this pairings on like the Konami site. I'm like checking it. I'm like, I'm like, okay, my X one two. Like, like I thought X one two would make it, but I'm just like second guessing. I'm like, like what if I'm not gonna make it? Like, oh my god, blah blah blah. And then pairings went up, and I ended up, I ended up getting I think uh, 40th, and then like X, I think like 20 X two ones made it. So, which are below X one twos. So it was. So I had one loss, two draws. So it's above two losses and one draw. So um, so yeah. So it was cool. I so I got in, and then I think through top cut I played. I two owed an Achuria runic player in top sixty four. Um, I two owed a Scareclaw adventure, Kashtira, Punk, Gamma Seal lock combo deck. Um, okay, that was crazy. Yeah, um, shout out to Thomas Dernil from Wisconsin. Um, he had, like, by far the coolest deck I saw the entire weekend. Um, yeah, uh, game two hands on, like, Baron with Gamma Seal with at least two negates, plus, like, the Link 3 Scarecrow monster that puts everything in defense. And, like, I don't know how I got through it, but I did, like, Pot of Purity for six, Debate and Negate, Gamma Seal Negates activation, so I activated another Pot, forgot to dig, Tactics Debate Baron. And then, like, just managed to, like, go, like, special, uh, uh, a cash starter, birth, bring back. Like, I managed to, like, play without putting another card in Grave. Because every time you put a card in Grave, the Kaiju Field Spell gets another counter. And for every two, you can remove two counters to negate with Gamma Seal, negate any card activation and destroy it. Um, and it's not once, it's unlimited. So every time you get two counters, you get another negate. So I just try to play, like, without putting cards in Grave. So I ended up using, I forgot how I outed the Gamma Seal. I think I used, um... Draco sack, or oh, I think I used Dark Arms. I had one card in Grave, the one that he negated with Baron. That, so, because I have to have one in my own Grave to be able to activate the effect to banish. So, I think I made Dark Arms, popped the Gamma Seal, and then popped like the Baron, and then I passed with everything in defense. But like, I cleared his board enough to the point where like I couldn't attack because the tribe, the tri um Scareclaw, Triclaw still links, uh, forces all my stuff into defense, so I couldn't like push. But, like, I cleared enough of his board to where, like, he had just, like, he tried to play next turn, but he couldn't really do much, so we had to pass back. And we passed back for a couple turns until I drew the field spell, and then the field spell outed the the Triclaw. Because the Triclaw puts everything in defense, and it's unaffected by all activated effects from defense mode monsters. So it's hard to out. So I, I finally I drew the field spell to out it, and then he said that was the only game, and then I won. So he said that was the only game all weekend where someone broke the Gamma Seal lock and played through it. Except for one other one where someone summoned their own Gamma Seal, and then... That was interesting, but he said, yeah, so that was cool. 
Um, that was a cool game to win. Um, and then top eight, I or no top sixteen, I played against one of the Australian players. Um, there were three players in the event from Australia: a uh, Poe, who won YCS Hartford last year, and his two friends, uh, Jonas and Peter. Um, they're all really good players, and like Peter was probably the one of the, one of the toughest opponents I played th- during the tournament. Um, we had a really really close mirror game three. He almost broke my board. I think he did. I Ibley locked him, and he outed it by me linking into Donner, because he had like I think he had an Ash, which. That's one of the weaknesses to Ibley, is if you Ibley them and then they Ash your Theosis, because you've already used your normal for Ibley, it's a lot harder to play through an Ash on Theosis than it normally would be. So I had to make like a very I had to make like a very mid board and pass, and then he was able to normal summon Rise Heart, Link to Donner, play through it. And then we both made like a minor misplay that game. Like I made a minor misplay that almost cost me the game, and then he made a he made a misplay that cost him the game. On my turn the misplay was uh when I summoned Unicorn at the start of the turn. And then normal Ibley. Um, if you when you're gonna Ibley them, you don't use your unicorn effect yet because Ibley in first forces them to use Imperm immediately if they have an Imperm, so that because um, once they get Ibley, I- Imper- Imperm's dead. So they'll if you Ibley effect in grave, they'll chain Imperm right there on your unicorn, and that way you haven't used that unicorn yet. So the activation of unicorn search effect is still legal for the turn. So later in the turn, if you can bring back a unicorn, you can still use the effect of that unicorn. So that happened. He imperved my unicorn. So the effect is still live later on if I can summon another one. I continue, he ash, I think he I think I had like hard open Theosis and he ashed it or like oh no that's what I don't think he ashed Theosis. I think because he imperved that unicorn, it was awkward the way I had to extend. But I did end up I think birthing back. I think I went like summon a rise heart from hand rise heart from hand overlay and then like brought back unicorn with birth. I forget, but I remember resummoning a unicorn and that and. Like, like I just said, like because he had imperm the original one, and I hadn't activated the effect yet. I could have searched off that unicorn for, an, I think, a birth for a uh, follow up for the next turn. And like I'm so used to normal, you never use unicorn late in the combo when you summon it for the for the second time. Like I literally forgot that I had specifically kept the effect live, so I didn't search off the second one that I summoned that turn. And then, not, and then on his turn, when he basically broke my board, like that almost cost me the game because I wouldn't have had follow up next turn because I forgot that search. But then hit him on his turn. I think he used a tactics to take a Fenrir from me, and then he literally forgot to use the Fenrir he took, and then did like a weird link play and passed, and then he realized he had forgotten to search off Fenrir, and he could have done like a full combo instead of like passing on like a, a like I think a Shangira or something. So like we both made like a misplay that game where like like if he had capitalized on mine he would have beat me, and then he but then he he misplayed too, so I was able to capitalize on that, and then I ended up getting that game. That was game three, and that was definitely one of like closest matches of the weekend um and then top eight uh i won two over versus the, the other australian guy their, their friend jonas who's super nice um he got bad luck game one i think he bricked and then i got him game two and then top four i played shu ping uh he was playing runic cash um his deck was really cool but games one and two i, I broke his board i think he went first both games and then um yeah, I I got him, and then finals I played against Jesse Flores, which was the which was the one that was streamed. All of my top cut matches were two zero except for top sixteen against Peter. So I went twelve one in singles in top cut. Nice. Yeah, and then that was, and then we finally finished at like eleven twenty local time, and there was almost no one left in the convention center. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad that yeah. you like let me go home. <laughs> Because I was, like, going to wait for you until oh. you were done. But then you were like, oh, you can go home. I'll be fine. I'll stay in L.A. And then yeah. you won the whole thing. Yeah, because yeah, Zara, Zara was, like, my ride. Like, I had, I had stayed um, at Zara's house the night before. And so, like, but, yeah, I was like, it's okay. Because you, 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 you had finished playing, like, or I think it was, yeah, it was day two. I, know, I think, I, think fr- I stayed at your house Friday night. And this was yeah. Sunday, but but still, like I I, I didn't really have a, a pl- have like a set place to stay that night, but I knew like I could probably find somewhere to stay. I had my suit, like I was rolling my suitcase around with me like the whole weekend. It was it was very funny. Um, and then at the end, I ended up this, this one guy who was there was like, I have oh yo, I got an Airbnb across the street you can stay at. And he he was a, we had some mutual friends, and he was a really cool guy, so he let me crash there Sunday night, and um, yeah. And then he had to he had to leave in the middle of the night to catch his flight, so I ended up waking up like alone in an airbnb and i was like 
hey, I was able to like reflect. I was like, oh, I'm a YC, two-time YC champion now. This is cool. Dude, yeah. I feel like the 250th should count for like two or three YCSs. Because it had like 3,300 people or something, right? Yeah, I think it was like thirty two hundred and like thirty or something like that. It was it was a lot. Um, I don't think it should count as like like maybe not that much, but 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 I, I really like it was like a really cool one to win because like like it was like I wouldn't necessarily say, I, I don't necessarily view it as like counting as like more than a, a YCS, but it's like it was the two fiftieth YCS, so it's still like something extra that's cool about it, you know? It's like a one point five YCS. <laughs> maybe maybe. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was cool. It's, um, it's been an interesting week. The two feet hit makes up for the remote one. That's so mean, Walter! <laughs> I like You're that, so though. Mean. I like that, though. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. What time is it? How long have I been recording? Oh, okay. I think, uh... About 50, 45 minutes, something like that? Yeah, 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Any shout out you want to make? Hmm. Shout out to Zara Khan for for housing me for a couple nights at the, uh, the event. No, oh, yeah. Here, oh, for. you forgot to tell them about how your flight was delayed for 12 hours. Oh, yeah. Then Monday night, after all that, like, I stayed, I, I stayed, I changed my flight. Which was like originally like a Monday morning flight. I changed it to like a Monday night, like overnight flight, so I could like stay Monday and hang out with some friends, including like Zara and like some of our other friends. And um, and then at like 10 p.m., the airline like changed my delayed my flight 11 hours. So then it went from a Monday night overnight flight to becoming a Tuesday morning flight. So I had so I ended up so I ended up, I ended up going back with Zara again after all for Monday night to stay there. And then uh, flew home Tuesday, um, Tuesday day, and that was uh, yeah, that was, was, was funny. I yeah. had to hang my prize card uh, up on the wall, like way up high, on like your little like key ring post thingy, so that the cat. I was like, okay, where's like the one spot where like the cats like won't get? <laughs> the cats always get everything. <laughs> anything, anything I leave anywhere in the apartment. Like, I'll, I'll wake up and it'll just be like upside down. Like, okay, I understand. I did warn him <laughs> about the cats. I told him my cats will get into whatever you he, leave out. He did warn me, and I still underestimated their actual power level. He tried hiding some packs. He's like, "Oh, I'm sure they're not gonna go after them if I hide them," but they found yeah, them. I they did. I hid them in like a crevice, like in between my suitcase and the wall. And when I woke up, they were scattered all on the floor. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's funny. But, my cats. Yeah, I but uh, cats. No, shout, out, shout out to uh, Luxury Gaming, as always. Shout out to Hani, my homie, who tested with me for the event, Infinite. And a shout out to Brad, who's going to test with me for Philly, Infinite. And, um, Yeah. Okay, and I just want to say, I feel like Polly's the most deserving to win the 250th YCS because he works so hard and he's really, really nice. And he tested with me when no one else would. <laughs> so I'm just happy he won because out of anyone that deserves it in this community, it is Polly Aronson. Thank you, Zara. <laughs> Yes. Okay. How do we find you? Oh, um, Paul, so at Paul Aronson on Twitter or Paul Aronson on uh, Facebook. Those are my two main, um, social media that I use. Yeah. I'm going to be, um, I'm, so, I, uh, I'm probably in the near future going to be, um, working with Medify. Um, nice. For as, as part of the coaching program or, cause I, I've, I've been, want, I've, I've worked with players in the past with coaching, um, and I enjoy it. But I never like applied to Medify, which I'm probably gonna do. But I haven't fully decided. I might, I might just do. I might simply work independent. Um, but I'm gonna. I'm planning to start doing uh, some kind of coaching program in the near future. So if anyone's interested, um, wants to talk or wants to work together, you know, um, let me know. 
So, okay. Yeah. And are you going to do YouTube now? I haven't decided. I've had a couple people suggest to me, um, like, it, that I should. Um, I've been told I'm very good at, like, um, explaining things and, and going in depth with uh, theory and, and helping, um, I don't know, explain and, and, and educate players on things. So it's, it's something I've considered, but I haven't, um, I haven't made a decision. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll work on some videos. I don't know. We'll see. Cool. Let's collab. Yeah. We're going to do of some, course. some purely collabs. Yes. It would yes. be sick. Per, okay. for the cat. Yes. That might be why I'm playing them. Because the deck reminds me of my cats. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you like this, please like, comment, subscribe. We're on uh, freaking iTunes, Spotify, those people. iTunes? Apple Podcasts? I don't know. And uh, if you want more interviews, let me know because I don't know if people want more interviews. I need to know this. So tell me if you want more and I'll give you more. But if you don't want more, then I'll just do it when I feel like it. Thank you, everyone. Oh, you want to have a duel? A, a post-kayak duel? No. Okay, how about a preparing for the current format duel? Sure. In fact, I'll, you know what? Sure, we can have a duel. I will play you with... How about you play me with your pearly deck, and I will play you with Cap. Okay. Because I don't... I don't have a I, have, I don't have a new deck yet for post kayak, but uh, maybe I'll learn some things. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, catch it on YouTube, guys. Okay, bye bye.